Welcome back, everyone, to our series, Why Christians Should Keep the Law. And today is actually episode 50. Uh, It's kind of a mile marker for us. Uh, We are still currently looking at the new covenant, what it is and what is the difference or differences in the plural between that of the old and that of the new. Uh, You know, thus far, we've looked at three significant differences, three elements uh, that are dramatically uh, different for us today. I'm going to bring a fourth one to the table. And uh, this one has to do with the office of mediatorship. You know, under the old covenant, Moses is the mediator. And ironically enough, the people of Israel elected him. And, and I say that because, you know, when, when Israel came to the mountain to come into covenant, Mount Sinai, and they heard the voice of God, literally, lightning ripping through the skies, peals of thunder, the, 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 the smoke billowing. God descended on this mountain in fire, and he spoke to every man, woman, and child, and they were terrified for their life. And after that experience, they, they come to Moses and say, Moses, you speak with us, and we will hear, but not let, let not God speak with us because we're going to die. Why should we all perish? And so Israel moves to elect Moses as the mediator, the go-between between them and God. You, you, go, you go find out what God wants and come back and tell us it, and we're going to do it. I mean, this is where Israel was at. Well, God gives the nod. He actually says what they say is right. And so God confirms this election, if you will, uh, because without his confirmation, it's not going to happen. But this was God's heart. This is what God wanted to begin with. So the fact that Israel is asking for this uh, is a very good thing in the eyes of the Lord. Well, you know, Moses sitting in this office as mediator, there's a lot to that. You know, Moses would go up, he would receive the instructions of the Lord, and then he would bring them back and teach the people. And so there's, there's an aspect of this mediatorship that we, we have to appreciate. It, it's, it's taking the heart of the Lord and expressing that to all of Israel and teaching them. And then in addition to that, what would Moses do? Well, he would judge. I mean, this, in, in, in a sense, is an extension of this mediatorship. It's the fact that he would judge the people. Uh, you know, in fact, if, if you go all the way into the first century, uh, in, into the days of Jesus, in Matthew 23, Jesus himself said, you know, the scribes and Pharisees sit in the seat of Moses. Now, what were the scribes and Pharisees doing? They were teaching the people the law, the very thing that Moshe did when he came down uh, and, and met with the children of Israel after spending time with God and God downloading on him. Well, the scribes and Pharisees, they brought the law to the people and they also served as judges. This is a, kind of a tandem, if you will, offshoot of this mediatorship. And so when you, when you think of mediator, uh, you have to think in these terms of one delivering the heart of God to the people. But it consisted even of more than that. You know, when Moses went up to the mountain and to receive the tablets of stone and the laws, while he was up there, the children of Israel committed a great sin. They made a golden calf. And God knew this. And as Moses, this mediator of the covenant, is spending time with God, God tells Moses, get down. The people have sinned against me. And they're attributing their deliverance out of Egypt to a golden calf. And, you know, it's at this time that uh, God actually says to Moses, I have seen this people, and indeed, it is a stiff-necked people. 
Now, therefore, let me alone that my wrath may burn hot against them and I may consume them and I will make of you a great nation. And so the Lord is very, very displeased with Israel to the point he wants to wipe them out and he's going to make a great nation out of Moses. Well, and you know, it's interesting. God would say this multiple times. He would say this again uh, later as you get into the book of Numbers. And here's where you really begin to appreciate the office of mediatorship, where the mediator is going to come and intercede on behalf of Israel because he's the one that has access and direct communication with God. And so Moses is going to respond to the Lord. Listen to this in verse 11. Then Moses pleaded with the Lord his God and said, Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people whom you have brought out of the land of Egypt with great power and with a mighty hand? And why should the Egyptians speak and say he brought them out to harm them, to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your fierce wrath and relent from this harm to your people. And so do you see, because Moses is in this position as mediator, he goes and he is interceding on their behalf. And this is the most amazing thing when you see the heart of Moses. His heart is so humble and so loving. When God says, I'm going to make you a great nation, he doesn't even hesitate for a moment. He doesn't even think, yeah, I'll accept that. That's a great idea, God. Make me great. I love that. You know, I don't want to deal with these people any more than you do. He doesn't do any of that. The heart of Moses was for the people. The heart of Moses was to preserve the character of God. And this guy is incredible. His only concern is, what about the Lord's well-being? What will the nations think of you, Lord? What are they going to say? He cares about defending the character of God. He cares about preserving the people of Israel. And actually, and I put it up here, but Moses goes on to tell God, remember your covenant with Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Remember what you promised them. I mean, look at the heart of this guy. This is this office of mediatorship. How does the Lord respond to Moses in this situation when God is, he's lit he is ready to let his wrath unleash. And so God responds to this mediator. And he says in verse 14, so the Lord relented from the harm which he said he would do to his people. He relented. Now get this. Moses goes back up to the mountain because of this great sin. And he wants the people's sin to be forgiven. He makes this journey alone to intercede on, be, on their behalf. And we, we, we pick it up in verse, tw or verse 30. Now it came to pass on the next day that Moses said to the people, you have committed a great sin. So now I will go up to the Lord. Perhaps I can make atonement for your sin. Then Moses returned to the Lord and said, oh, these people have committed a great sin and have made for themselves a God of gold. Yet now, if you will forgive their sin, but if not, I pray, blot me out of your book, which you have written. This is this heart of this mediator to the point where if you're not going to forgive them, then kill me too. I mean, and I share all this with you so that you can appreciate this office of mediatorship. See, because as we come into the new covenant, Moses does not stay. Moses does not remain as the mediator. We are given a new mediator. The apostle Paul says this to Timothy in chapter 2, verse 5. He says, for there is one God and one mediator between God and men, the man Christ Jesus. Jesus is now our mediator and he is superior 
to Moses. Moses was this prolific, phenomenal man of God, this incredible man of God. God truly picked the right guy to intercede on behalf of Israel, because I'm not sure anyone else had the humility and the love to maintain the cause in the context that we read. But Moses did it. But now we have a greater than Moses. We have one that is superior in every way with even a greater heart and greater accomplishments. And this is the one we go to to get to the Father. What does Jesus say? He says in John 14, 6, you know, I'm the way, the truth, and life. No one comes to the Father except through me. That is a mediator statement. He, you you want to get to the Father, you, you go through me. And so, you know, this is the concept of, you know, there, there are some very dangerous and erroneous teachings out there that would tell you, you don't pray or call upon Jesus. You bypass it entirely. You only call upon the Father or you only pray upon the Father. Absolute insanity. Now, certainly, we, we do pray to the Father. Uh, we should, but there's only one way to do that, and that's through the mediator. He is the go-between. He is our access point. And if you try to circumvent Jesus in any way, you have no access to the Father, period. And so he, he sits in this office for us. The writer of Hebrews says, but now Jesus has obtained a more excellent ministry inasmuch as he is also the mediator of a better covenant, which was established on better promises. See, because of Moses' function at Mount Sinai, he became the mediator. God brought that covenant to Israel through Moses. Well, the father brought the new covenant through his son, his only begotten son, Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is now the mediator for us. With that said, stay tuned. We have more coming in this vein of as we look at the new covenant and the differences between the old covenant. The Lord bless you and keep you.